and they're so great. And it, even in the body, it was, it went bit way beyond his body. His consciousness was way beyond that small form. And when he left that, the vehicle, that body that he was in, he went into omnipresence. And, but he was there already. He would, people would have to hold him up because he just, he was just so much in everybody and his love was flowing through everybody and he said, I don't know which body to keep going. It just, he was omnipresent even while he was in that body. And the master is, and the masters, they uh, show that they're not confined and that they can come any time and be with us and uh, Jesus resurrected his body and uh, Lady Mahashaya showed his body to in three different places at one time and Swami Sri Tesraji came back to Master and, and we'll hear that reading in a moment but it's so sweet because Master said, why did you leave me? Why did you go away? And Swami Sri Tesraji didn't really have an answer but that and I think that's the disciples' question. Of course, we love the human form of the Guru, but we should know that his vibration, his love, his consciousness, his blessings, his grace, is ever, ever flowing. And Master said, to those who think me near, I will ever be near. And to um, all those who received him, Jesus Christ said, he gave the power to know God, to see God. And, and you know, we're the second generation of disciples of Yogananda Ji. So 63 years ago he passed. And what is the disciples' role? Do we go find another guru? No. Do we act like nothing else, there's nothing else to do now that the Guru's gone? No. I think Swamiji gave the most beautiful example. He was 25 years old when Master left his body. And Swamiji, until his 80s, continued to serve his Guru, continued to get ever more in tune. And I remember a woman at Ananda asked Swamiji once, she said, how come we didn't we didn't meet Master in this life. You met him, but we never met him. And, and Swamiji said, it's, it's the way it should be. Now you can carry on this, this work um, when I'm gone. And uh, that's what the disciples' role is. We miss our guru, but we don't because he's with us all the time. When I was growing up in the church I was raised in, there was a beautiful song, uh, He Lives, and it talked about how, uh, this was a Baptist church, it talked about how Jesus lives with you all the time. He walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I'm his own. Such a sweet song, and this is the guru. He's walking with you, he's talking with you. Yesterday we had a retreat for the Living Discipleship Group, and then some of the yoga teachers were there. And uh, we did a practice of just taking a, a walking meditation and talking to Yogananda Ji. Whatever you had to say, mentally or out loud, whichever. But I think it was so effective because Guruji said uh, to send your prayer from here and to feel in the heart the response, what he's telling you. And when we came back together, everyone had some feeling of something that he said to them. But people always say, well, I don't hear anything. He doesn't talk to me. But if you spend the time, you do hear him. Some people said they felt Master saying, be happy, everything will be fine, or be patient, or have more faith, or I love you, or whatever. And it's so wonderful. We can do that every day. You call and you feel the response. And um, in this life, 
Yogananda Ji brought such a beautiful life for us all. And Swamiji, you just think of, I think, where would we be without these teachings, without the Guru Bhais, without these books we have, the beautiful music. Master brought a particular vibration and he brought it, he knew it wouldn't be such an easy life for us, for whatever various reasons, but he said, I will bring you all that you need. I can't be there with you in the body, but I'll bring you Swamiji, he will guide you. I'll bring you books, I'll bring you music, I'll bring you places to go, I'll bring you communities, and all of those have a particular vibration that we all feel a fami familiarity with. We feel an attunement with that. And that vibration is the disciple's duty to pass on, to continue to have and to pass on to others. And so those, if you're teaching yoga, that vibration we teach in a particular way. If you're singing in the choir, there's a vibration that comes out. You could feel through that song just went out into the whole world, blessing everyone. In particular, chants that Master wrote, he put a seed, a vibration of upliftment and love and joy in those chants and, and these places we can come to and, and everything. He's trying to say, I'm with you. I'm with you in everything that you do. And, and, and wherever you are, if you attune to me, and uh, I, Remember once um, I was saying to Swamiji, well, I mean, and serving Master, I said, well, what can I do? I, I don't know what to do. And he's, I said, you write books and you speak. And, you, and he said, just do whatever you can. Do what you can to, to help Master. And yesterday we also had another wonderful thing we did. We gave a gift to the Guru. And I ask all of you to today, as you come up to the altar, just have some gift from your heart. An attitude, no change may be, or deepening your meditation, or whatever it is, but maybe it's willingness, maybe it's joy, maybe it's more energy, maybe whatever. But think of all the gifts we receive every moment. Think of one gift. I will meditate every day, it's a beautiful gift but some gift that you give to the Guru. And in and, and service, uh, Guruji said, to be in tune with me, serve my work. And the channel will be blessed by what flows through it. And I think the most beautiful thing about Ananda is Swamiji always gave everybody a chance to serve their master. You don't find that. Look around. Anybody can come. And serve in one way or another and Guruji said in that way you get in tune with me you feel my energy and in various ways I recall Swamiji went from continent to continent country to country serving serving he never stopped serving always giving to Guruji and there's a story of a woman who um, she was trying to start a meditation group like Mickey and Mandri have and and uh, the first few times nobody came, but she didn't care. <laughs> she just, she talked to the walls. She said, I'm serving. And as she kept going, more and more people came and, and she was able to help people. And I remember a very dear friend of mine uh, who had a terminal illness. I won't go into the long story, but uh, she, had, she had a year, I think, to live. And she said, well, if I'm going to die now, I'm just going to serve my guru. She got in her car, she drove all around America, teaching, chanting, writing chants, singing, speaking. And she lived longer and longer. She lived for 10 years. She was supposed to live for one year because she was serving her guru. And she said, whatever happens to me, I want his teachings to go forward. That's the duty of the disciple. In one way or another, healing prayers or music or setting up the chairs or coming. Every time you meditate, you're serving Yogananda Ji's ray. Every time you have a kind thought, every time you're willing, every time you're joyful. And what blocks the energy 
is negativity, moodiness. Swamiji said, in, uh, he said, Master said to him once, now, no more moods now, otherwise, how can you help people? And you can fill in the blank, no more anger, no more fears, no more worries, otherwise, how can you help people? Meaning, how can I come through you? Those create, create blocks. And I heard on one of Swamiji's talks recently, a beautiful story. He said he had some difficulty when he was living there with Master. And so Master had a function, and, and he walked in, and Swamiji was thinking, you know, this problem, this problem. And Master looked at him, and he just smiled, like, I know you're going through that, and my blessing is there. And so then Master walked by. So Swamiji didn't let go of it. He kept going, you know, I'm still worried. So he said after that, Master just ignored him. He didn't take the blessing, he didn't open, he said after that he just ignored me. And his point was, the blessing's always there. And as you open, the guru is trying to help, but if we keep going with the same thing, he just ignores you and says, well, figure it out for yourself. And I recall when Swamiji, some of, one of the last years of his life, I asked him, I said, Swamiji, when you leave this earth, Will you be able to help us as much as you've helped us already? And his answer was very interesting. I, I'm still meditating on it. He said, I really hope so. And I thought, does he not know or does he know? I mean, he should know. But he said, I really hope so. And it took me a long time to understand what he meant. He was saying, of course, I will be there. Will you? be able to reach me. Understand? Will you be in tune? Will you keep yourself uplifted so that I can help you? And that's where, how we reach. In other words, we can't expect the masters to keep reaching down. We have to lift ourselves and try to reach upward to them. And. Uh, in that way, I was thinking of the chant, Door of My Heart, so beautiful. And, uh, but, you know, it, it has these beautiful words, open wide I keep for thee. Now, wilt thou come just for once? Now, open wide, how many people's hearts are really open wide, ready for God? Open, close, open, close, open, close, open wide. And open wide, how? By doing the Guru's, practicing his teachings, by right attitudes, by chanting his chants, by reading the books, by doing the practices. This is how you get open wide. And the thought came to me that um, after Master's passing, he appeared to people. I mean, I, I know of at least three or so people that Master, I mean, they said Master came to them, and one is in the path where these people were coming from India to California um, to see Master's body after his passing, and uh, they, they didn't make it. And the one man said that Master appeared to him and embraced him in India. He came to him. And uh, there was a woman at Ananda village who I've told this story, so I won't go into it long, but she saw Yogananda Ji at Ananda, and uh, she wasn't a member, she was a mother of one of the people there. And, and uh, he said, um, or she said, well, do you, do you come here often? And he said, I'm here all the time. And she was able to tell that to the people at Ananda. Very, very sweet. And then one time, something happened here in India with the family that, uh, I won't say the names, but one of the children uh, saw Yogananda. This was after a very sacred ceremony, the discipleship ceremony, and, and this was many years back. And the child, the children came up as well to get blessings with their parents, not as disciples, but just as a blessing. And, 
And uh, the next day, her mother phoned me and said, oh, you must talk with her because something happened. And, and I said, oh, okay. So I talked with her and she said, I saw Master. And I said, well, was it a dream or were you asleep and you woke up? And she said, no, 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 no. I was, I think she was maybe 13 or 14 at that time. She said, no, I saw him. He was in my room. And I said, well, what happened? She said, I was sleeping and then I woke up, there was a feeling in the room, and I looked, and he was at the door. And I said, oh my. I said, what did you do then? She said, I pulled the covers over, <laughs> and I hid. <laughs> and that, to me, made the story absolutely true, because what would a child do? Like, whoa. <laughs> but how dear that she was that open. And, but that's rare. We can't expect him to come to your house and my house and everybody's house. I mean, he's busy. But that's a rare occurrence. But what's not rare, and that can happen every day, is if we every day tune in and talk with him. And every day feel in the heart his presence and his response. Every, again, every moment. It doesn't have to be just every day. It could be all the time conversations with Master, conversations with one of the gurus, and feeling their presence. Uh, and with the beautiful dream I had of Yogananda Ji, it seems the right day to tell this dream again. <laughs> but it's so sweet that there were many people who were with Ananda, and the only person I remember was Swamiji was there. And he was, all of us were there. I don't remember anybody's face, but there was many, many souls with Swamiji. And we were in a huge hall, and we were all waiting for Master to come. And we knew he was coming. We, we were, had finished our life. Swamiji had led us all the way through, and we were there. And some people had gone through many, many, many trials. And, you know, but everybody was still there. And we had made it all the way through to the end. And then suddenly the doors, I remember there were double doors, and they flew open, and in walks Master. His hair was just flying back. And, and he was chanting a very strong, I never heard it before, a beautiful chant. And he was just so happy. He was happy with everybody. That was the beautiful thing. There was no judgment, there was no, uh, you didn't meditate and you didn't energize and I didn't see you doing enough Kriyas. It was just a, such a love, such a sweetness. And he went and grabbed to people's hands or blessed them or touched them on the head or whatever, in blessing. And then suddenly it was all done. We were done and we went with Master into the light and the life was finished. And I had that dream long ago, and I think I had that dream because it's real. And that's what will happen. Let us not feel, let's have Master back here. Let's go where he is. He's waiting for us. And we can go with him in this life into the light of God and feel his blessings there. God bless you all. Please, Jayanti, the reading on Swami Sri Tesmaji.